so this week I want to go into detail about the pros and the cons of having a truck camper and in particular how that compares to my experience with camper vans. For the past almost seven years I've been living alternatively a lot of the time in various different camper van builds and we have recently settled upon a truck camper for the time being. So I want to talk about the pros and the cons. Let's start with some of the pros. Okay, so pro number one is the cost of a slide-in truck camper. You can get a slide-in camper like this in a pickup truck for a lot cheaper on average than it would cost you to buy an empty shell cargo van and build it out yourself, or even more expensive, to buy an already fully converted Class B RV. When I bought this truck, just before I bought it, I was also considering potentially getting a box van and then converting that myself. But when I was searching, I found that box vans were incredibly expensive, at least at the time, which was early last year. And uh, you know, I was looking at like $20,000 for a box van with 130, 140,000 miles on it. And it was beat to crap. I mean, and they were all priced like that simply because there was great demand for cargo vans and for vans in general and, and box trucks. Uh, whereas with pickup trucks, yes, the price still has gone up quite a bit for pickup trucks, but there are just a lot more pickup trucks out there. I mean, everybody has a pickup truck, it seems, at least here in the United States. So when you go searching for one to buy, like it's much more likely that you're going to find something that'll work for you in your price range. Of course, after getting the truck, I then needed to add the camper. And a few months later, I actually bought a different camper from this one. I had it before this. And it's a, it was an older Phoenix pop-up camper from 1998. Unfortunately, it was in pretty rough shape and I didn't realize how bad of shape it was in before I bought it. So I ended up swapping that one out for the upgraded Rogue here. And, you know, overall though, even with everything and me losing my butt on that whole transaction, it still, I think, is cheaper than it would have been for me to buy that box van that had way more miles than this truck even has on it and would have required me to do all of that work to convert. And, you know, I, I really do think that if you find the right slide-in camper, you might be able to find something used that's a little bit older. I mean, you can get into a truck and a slide-in camper cheaper than it would cost to build out a van or buy a Class B RV. And, and that kind of leads me to point number two here, pro number two, and that's that when you buy a slide-in camper like this, or even an older one, you're not gonna have to build your home entirely from scratch. If you buy a high-top cargo van or a box van, you're gonna have to spend months and months building it out and, and doing all kind of work to it, whereas this, for me at least, was entirely turnkey and I was ready to hit the road. Pro number three is that truck campers are just quite a bit roomier than vans are in general, at least in my experience. This camper and then even the old beat up one that I had just before this were both larger than any vehicle that Shannon and I had had beforehand. That includes the Sprinter, the High Ace, and everything else. There's just a lot of space with that cab over bed and then you have the little dinette area. A lot of them even have like a bathroom in the back if you get one that's even a little bit bigger than this one. And uh, there's, there's a lot of space. And then on top of that, if you have an extended cab or a crew cab pickup truck like this, you're going to gain all the storage in the back. So I'm able to stick like sporting gear back there, tools and everything else. I mean, there's just way more space. Pro number four, it is very easy to take a truck camper off the bed of a pickup truck. It's kind of nice to be able to pull the truck away and then have your pickup truck back to be able to do other things. So if you're, for example, living off grid on some land in the middle of the desert and you need the truck to haul water or to haul materials for a project or whatever it may be, uh, it's pretty easy just to pull this thing off, set it aside, and then get your truck back. And then even if you are full-time in the camper, it's also kind of nice to be able to park at a campground, take the camper off, and then have your truck Pro number five is just the overall profile of the truck camper. I'm able to fit it into a regular parking space relatively easily. I guess that's also a pro for most camper vans too though. There's not too many that don't fit in a regular space. So it's not really much of an advantage over vans, but I guess it is over maybe small RVs, for example. And that brings me to pro number six, which is probably the last pro on my list of good things about truck campers. And that is that they are very mobile or at least can be 
very mobile. You can put them on lifted pickup trucks with aggressive all-terrain tires and actually be able to overland with them and get them to places that a standard van won't be able to go. The one time that I did kind of off-road to an adventurous location with this truck, uh, I lost a coolant hose and made a giant mess. But you know, if, if you're more careful than I am, then you could definitely create an overlanding rig out of a truck camper and be able to get to some really cool spots. All right, moving right along to the list of cons of having a truck camper versus a camper van in particular. And there are quite a few cons. I think number one has got to be gas mileage. For us in particular, this is a three quarter ton truck. It uh, guzzles gas. I'm lucky to get 11 or 12 miles to the gallon on a tank. And that's like on a good one with a tailwind when I'm going extra slow. Not great. There's a lot of wind resistance on top with the camper. If you have a, a regular size slide-in camper like that, you're going to get that wind resistance and it's going to bring down your gas mileage. It's a lot worse, at least for me, than it ever has been in previous vans. Shannon Sprinter, for example, the High Ace, both diesel vans, they got pretty decent gas mileage, a lot better than what we're getting with this. Number two is that it can be pretty difficult to find a camper to fit a specific truck. So say you already have a pickup truck or you found one that you really like and then you haven't quite found your camper yet, it can be a little bit of a problem, in particular just because a lot of the campers that are out there, the slide-in campers, even the ones that are advertised for half-ton trucks, don't actually fit comfortably in a half-ton truck. They're kind of making it up a little bit. Like, it's not quite safe to put a 1,600-pound Lance 650, for example, in the bed of your F-150 that has a 1,700-pound payload. You know, so you have to, you know, you have to be able to figure that out, I guess, before you embark on this route, and that is definitely a con in, in my opinion. You know, that's a big reason why we just went with a three quarter ton truck to begin with. Like I didn't want to have to deal with that. I wanted to have my options open, but say you have a Tundra, for example, I think the Tundra is a great truck. Say you have one of those, like you're going to have to be careful about what camper you choose. And then you might need to do some modifications like airbags or suspension upgrades in order to make it so that it rides comfortably and safely in the bed of your truck. Con number three is that Campers and RVs in general these days kind of suck. They are like not very well built. There's a reason why they call it RV quality. And even if you buy something brand new, especially if it's like this, where it you know, came off of an assembly line, you can just tell like build quality wise, it's not really there. And I think that applies for the vast majority of campers and RVs, even the higher end ones still have their issues when they're coming off an assembly line like that. So you gotta be careful. That's something to think about when you're looking at a truck camper, especially if you're looking at a used one and you wind up with something that's 15 or 20 years old like I did and then realize that it's kinda, you know, falling apart. Like the roof is just doesn't fit right over the edges and water is pouring inside your camper, for example. But you know, just speaking from experience, there are things to think about with build quality. Con number four has got to be ingress and egress, getting into and out of a truck camper. Comparing it to a van, most vans are going to have like two front doors, driver and passenger side. There's going to be a sliding door and usually a rear door. So it's pretty easy to get in and out of it if you find your entry point when you're designing your camper van. And it makes it a lot easier to kind of move around with a truck camper. You only have one way to get in and out usually, it's that back door. You know, I've seen a few things online where folks are able to do a pass through, but generally speaking, like the window that's in my camper, for example, like there's no way you're fitting through that window. And then you'd have to modify your truck and come up with this whole setup and it'd be a pain. It would really only work in emergencies anyways. You certainly wouldn't be using it every day. So getting into and out of a truck camper is challenging. I think con number five has got to be another very important one, and that is that a slide-in truck camper like this is not going to hold its value as well as a Class B RV or even a self-converted camper van. When I compare this to my NV200 or the High Ace, for example, like those kind of went up in value over the time that I owned them, whereas this slide-in camper is absolutely not going to go up in value. It's only going to go down more than likely. I guess you could buy like an old beat-up slide-in camper and then spend a bunch of time restoring it and fixing it up and then maybe it would hold its value or go up in value a little bit, but generally speaking, partially probably due to the build quality that I touched on a few moments ago, these guys are just not worth as much money as Class B RVs in the long run. And con number six, the last one on this list, is probably the one that bugs me the most, and that is that this rig 
and most truck camper rigs similar to this have absolutely zero stealth factor. They are not stealthy at all. I have lost any ability to stealth camp. I mean, I, I can still do it and I am probably gonna do it. Stay tuned for next week's video. I'm more than likely gonna be trying to blend in on the coastline, but I'm not really gonna blend in. It's just gonna be a matter of whether or not I get lucky or whether or not the neighbors are bothered by my presence, I guess. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. This thing is just not stealthy and any truck camper of at least this size is not gonna have any stealth factor. So what's the verdict? Is a truck camper better than a camper van? Is truck life better than van life? I did list a lot of cons there, but listed a lot of pros as well. And I think that the answer to that question just depends on who you are and what you need. At this moment in my life, I think having a pickup truck that I can separate from a camper and having a nice comfortable space to be able to travel while I am not living off grid and working on that property in New Mexico is absolutely the right choice. So for me, a truck camper is 100% better than a van at this point in my life. But for you, if you're considering getting a truck camper or possibly a camper van or some other kind of RV, you gotta make your own pros and cons list and try to decide what will work best for you. Hope this video was helpful for some of you guys out there that might be considering getting a truck camper or possibly hitting the road and traveling in one for an extended period of time. These are the things that I was thinking about a lot in the time leading up to when I bought the pickup truck and then the two campers uh, after that. So like I said, hopefully, uh, hopefully there was some valuable information in there. If anybody else has any pros and cons, feel free to share them below. I'm sure that I forgot a couple of them. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Definitely helps out the channel. I can't thank y'all enough for watching and for following along on this journey. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.